Hello, my name is Santosh Arunuri and I'm a Storage Specialist Solutions Architect here at AWS. In this video, I'll be talking about AWS Storage Gateway, specifically about right-sizing the cache disk in Amazon S3 File Gateway. AWS Storage Gateway is a hybrid cloud storage service that gives you on-premises access to virtually unlimited cloud storage. Storage Gateway service provides different types of gateways, and today, we are going to focus on the S3 file gateway. Amazon S3 file gateway presents a file interface that enables users to store files as objects in Amazon S3 using the industry standard NFS and SMB file protocols. It allows access to those files via NFS and SMB from your data center or from an Amazon EC2 instance. It also allows you to access those files as objects directly in Amazon S3 using S3 APIs. Because on the back end, your data is being stored in an S3 bucket when using the S3 file gateway, you actually are able to leverage some of the native S3 features such as versioning, lifecycle policies, cross-region replication, and even have access to some of the different storage classes in S3 when using the S3 file gateway. There are three main recommended use cases when considering using the S3 file gateway. Firstly, S3 File Gateway allows you to upload data that is generated on-premises to Amazon S3, enabling you to build data lakes and event-driven data processing workflows. With a one-to-one -one mapping from file to object, you can leverage native AWS services to run analytics and process the data. The second use case is S3 File Gateway enables cost-effective short and long-term retention by storing database backups in Amazon S3 with the ability to lifecycle to lower cost storage tiers. You can reduce the need for enterprise backup applications and use built-in tools such as SQL Server Management Studio and Oracle RMAN to write your database backups to the SC File Gateway file shares. And lastly, SC File Gateway can be used as an archive repository for cold data such as images and videos. It allows you to store petabytes of infrequently accessed data durably long-term and cost-effectively in Amazon S3. You can do all of this without needing to change your existing application workflows. Now, a quick high-level overview on how S3 File Gateway actually works. The first thing you're going to do as a user is to download the VM image for your gateway and deploy it on-premises as a VM on a storage gateway hardware appliance, or even as an EC2 instance. And next, you're going to associate a cache disk to your VM. Once you do that, from a control plane perspective, your gateway VM is going to communicate with the storage gateway service over HTTPS. From a data plane perspective, the gateway VM is going to communicate directly with S3 also over HTTPS. Your application server is going to communicate with the gateway VM over NFS and SMB protocols. Whenever reads and writes are going to and from your storage gateway, they're actually going first to your gateway VM. The cache disk is important because it functions as a cache, and this is for two reasons. One is for low latency to recently accessed data, especially when you're doing a lot of reads in your workflow. And then the second use case is to reduce data egress charges. Instead of any reads coming directly from the backend S3 bucket, the data will be fetched from the local cache disk, reducing your data egress charges. When it comes to the data transfer for S3 file gateway, they're actually optimized in a way so that any data transfer between the gateway and AWS is going to use multi-part parallel uploads or byte range downloads to better use the available network bandwidth. There's a one-to-one -one mapping between the files that you're writing to your gateway VM and the objects that are associated with your S3 bucket. Now, let's talk about cache disk best practices. Your gateway uses its cache storage to provide low latency access to your recently accessed data. And the cache disk acts as the on-premises durable store for data that's pending upload to Amazon S3. For cache, at a minimum, you will need at least one disk of 150 gigabytes. This is the default value for the cache disk. For best performance, the cache disk should be large enough to cover the size of your active working data set. 
The amount of cash can always be increased, so starting small and increasing as needed is often the most cost-effective approach. Next, it is going to benefit you from a performance standpoint if you're using high-performance disks like SSDs or NVMEs for your cache. Using SSDs for your cache benefits you from high IOPS and low latency. It is also recommended that the root disk for your gateway appliance is actually NVMe or SSD since it holds the metadata index of the data that is in your cache. Next, I want to call out that you can always add cache disks, but you can't decrease that. So that's why I would recommend you start out with the 150 gigabytes and adjust based on the actual usage and performance metrics and scale from there. You can use Amazon CloudWatch operational metrics to monitor the cache story usage and provision more storage as needed using the console. When we talk about scaling the cache disks, you want to add new disks to increase the capacity of data cache rather than increasing the size of an existing disk. And the reason we recommend this is because providing multiple disks for the gateway will improve write performance through parallelizing access to the data, which leads to higher IOPS. Lastly, monitoring your gateway and its resources can help you track the health of your gateway. The gateway uses least recently used algorithm for eviction of data from the cache. When the cache is actually being shared between multiple file shares on your gateway, it is important to recognize that heavy utilization of one of those shares could impact the cache resources of another share, which in turn means there is going to be some sort of a performance impact. It is important to continue monitoring resources on the gateway to understand your workload. In the case of read-heavy and mixed read-write workloads, you're going to want to achieve a high percentage of cache hits on the reads. Otherwise, the data is going to be fetched from S3, which is going to increase your data egress charges. We can take a look at this by monitoring and looking at the gateway metrics in CloudWatch titled cache hit percent. This is going to indicate the percent of reads coming from the cache disk, and we want this value to be as close to 100% as possible. On the other hand, when we talk about write-heavy workloads such as backup and archive, the way the S3 file gateway works is that it is going to buffer the incoming writes from your applications and clients prior to copying your data asynchronously to S3. This is why it is important to make sure you have sufficient cache space to buffer the written data. Again, by looking at the CloudWatch metric for cache percent dirty, it is going to indicate the percent of data that has not yet persisted to S3. If this value is too high, you want to increase your disk space or increase your network bandwidth, or maybe do both. You can take a look at the read bytes and write bytes metrics as well to determine and calculate the actual throughput. You can use Amazon CloudWatch to view the storage gateway metrics to get a better perspective on how your gateways are performing. To summarize what we've discussed, here is a list of best practices to size your Amazon S3 file gateway cache. I hope you found this informative and thanks for watching.